Hey, this is Roy from Tesla Owners US and we are at our favorite site again at Ross Industries. And this is JJ and what we're gonna do today, we're gonna install a special trailer brake and we're gonna explain all of the components to you and this comes after this intro. Hear the birds and see the sun Side by side our fears are done Oh, the good times just begun Oh, we know what we have, let's hold on tight Found what we're looking for in life So let's start, we're gonna go piece by piece and we're gonna get one piece what you get from Tesla, right? And this is this piece, right? Is mm -hmm. that, uh, right? So this is the brake controller harness. Uh, harness hooks into the car. Um, the, they have their four pin connector. Um, this is pretty standardized across the industry as far as colors. Uh, you got your power and ground, which are your black and red. Your white is your brake switch signal. And the blue is the actual power feed to your trailer brakes. Uh, and then the harness that we get from the trailer brake controller has the same four colors. We yes. Get red and black and white and blue. Yeah. The wires are a little bit thicker. Uh, a little bit thicker on the brake controller, but uh, this yeah. is um, as far as what Tesla believes uh, for power that they'll be sending through the wires, this should be good enough. That's good enough. Okay. Good. So, and then what are the other pieces here? Other pieces, we have our control box. Um, so for your car, we went with the Hopkins Insight system. Um, mm. I actually really like it. I used it on uh, an old expedition of mine. Um, it's proportional, so it uses the inertia from the car to apply uh, a certain amount of braking power to the trailer. Um, I like the Insight system because they separate it into three different pieces. So this is the actual control box. Uh, this we're gonna mount behind the panel. Never gonna see it, but it's gonna do its job well. Let me explain it. That means the inertia from the car means if you brake hard and the car has a resist, or brakes hard and you feel that resistance of braking, then it applies more power to the brake instead of less power, Correct. right? Yes. Yep. So that's control box. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> this is the manual brake slider. Uh, manual brake slider also has the sensitivity and power adjustment buttons on it. Yeah. Um, this is necessary for uh, if you're if you're going downhill and you start to feel some trailer sway. Uh, this you can apply just trailer brakes versus using your vehicle brakes. So this will uh, manual activate your trailer brakes. Oh, so good, good, good. All right. Like yeah. Third piece would be your display. Um, on this setup, uh, it's a real nice small display. Um, doesn't really take a whole take up a whole lot of space, but this will show you proportional braking power. Uh, it's got a number display on it. It also has a little red dot on it that will let you know that your trailer is connected. Um, and uh, the biggest reason I like this system is because we can put these two pieces pretty much anywhere. Yes. Um, so we can make it as inconspicuous as possible versus having that big box mounted up underneath the dash. Yeah, so, yeah. Excellent. So there we hey. go. So, and JJ is putting it in for me, uh, for the trailer, because we do trailer um, drives yep. with the Model X SUV, and we are happy with this, and we're going to follow him a little bit along yep. with this. All right. Thank you, JJ, and uh, uh, see all of the steps, and I try to explain it. And before I forget it, you know, you remember that white little Model S what I had and I gave it to JJ's daughter and look what they made out of it. They made it for my wife in purple and pink. Now there's a pink little Model S and it looks awesome. And she's gonna riding it. And we hope that she's gonna riding it in the parade this year. Yeah, I hope they have the parade. I hope they have the parade because she was riding it in the parade, Pretty electric light parade, yeah. yeah, every year. And we hope that she's gonna ride it this year as well. She need purple lights as well, probably, or uh -huh. pink lights, yeah. <laughs> something Watch. like that. I have to ask uh, Jim if we can get some pink lights for mm -hmm. that. And she gets some pink lights for that. Excellent. Hey, we like that. Okay, the first wire or cable and conduit is prepared. And 
that is connecting that comes from Tesla this piece what we had there and this piece is goes to the regular uh, trailer connection yeah, right? to the brake controller to the brake uh, controller comes in the brake controller box uh, basically all we did was red to red black to black white to white and green to green uh, you can either solder or butt splice. Uh, I like to use heat shrink butt splices, those guys. Yeah. Uh, just crimp them on and then hit them with a lighter or a torch and they shrink down and that kind of secures it in place. Uh, also makes it weather tight, not that you need weather tight inside the car. And he used the torch uh, that uh, Yep, used the I torch on that. mine. Um, yeah. And then we wrapped it in split loom uh, just to protect it from anything inside the dash. Um, and yeah. Sharp edges just because we're going to rely on this to help stop the trailer. So, all right, a good idea. Good. Let's check for the next step. Okay, what we have to do here now is we looked in the owner's manual in order to find where the connection is. And oh, let me try to turn that around here. And uh, it wouldn't start first, and then we connect it to the wireless network from here. And then here it says where the connector is that is the Model X 4 pin connector. And there is another box, was another box in front of it. And here, that's that four pin connector we just assembled. Yep. And then they're saying here, when towing a loaded trailer that weighs more than 1,000 pounds, and this is the case more than 405 key Tesla, recommends that the trailer be equipped with its own brake system adequate for the weight of the trailer, ensures compliance with government regulations following steps to connect the brake controller and then here is a description how to connect the brake controller and it's pretty good now all of the wiring disassembling assembling yeah, is not being done but at least and then you gotta get four warnings in there as well and towing guidelines wow so this is all in your manual just at your car you don't have to dig papers Trailer sway mitigation. Oh, wow, can I read that? Okay, give you a little bit of view here what we have to install. So we had to take that panel off, and then and there's the breaker box there in the back, and we had to, I had to change the breaker anyway. So that device here goes all the way down here. You can see, and then we're gonna stack, we're gonna stuck it behind the panels all the way in the bottom and then lock that down. The only thing what we need to worry, worry about that needs to be uh, horizontal in this way we cannot turn it twisted because there's that sensor, inertia sensor in there and that's the guidelines for that and the wires are going out here and then there's enough room. So that's what we're going to install there and here's already the wire coming out there Let's go. So what I'm going to hope is that there's an integrated brake controller in the Cybertruck. Because here I have to, we have to install that uh, brake controller. Uh, and okay, that, that's okay because not many people are towing with the Model X. But for a truck, you need to have that in a Cybertruck. You need to have that, uh, you have to need to have it there so that you only have to hook up the wires and don't put an extra controller in there. And uh, for you guys engineers, think about that. Brake controller needs to be part of it because at one of the Fords, this is an F-150, right? Yeah. And then these have integrated brake controllers and you only have to wire it up. Yeah, while we are here, actually the Tesla recommends that over a thousand pounds there's a trailer brake controller installed. So they're delivering the connector, the connectors and the wiring a little bit, but uh, that's it. The brake controller you have to buy for yourself and this is that, that brake controller. I'm going to show you a movie about that, uh, what that brake controller is. And for Arizona, when your trailer is over 3,000 pounds, then you have to have it. Most of the people don't even know they're pulling trailers with 3,000 pounds and the police is stopping them and they said, oh, do you have a trailer, trailer controller, trailer brake controller? I said, no. Oh, here we go, $150 or whatever it costs. I don't know what the penalty for that is. But I have to have that installed. So good that nobody stopped me. Uh, I didn't even know that and most people don't know that. And JJ just told me that uh, this is mandatory. And 
Could that be due Everything to is already tucked under. You cannot see it. There was a connection from here through, right? That was the so, controller cable, right? Yeah. yeah, that is the cable what we put a plastic conduit to it. Yeah. Oh. And then it came. There it is. That guy right there. That was the connector. That where we had to connect it to. Yep. Right. That that came. This is the cable that came from Tesla, right? Uh, yeah, so yeah, this yeah. is this is this actually the piece of that, right? Yeah, this is the the cable that came from Tesla. Yeah, this is the connector it goes into I, into the controller system, uh -huh. control system. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and then we tucked it all the way under the board dashboard here, and then all the way here through on the side, and then all the way down. And there's the controller box there. This is the box what should be part of the car in a cyber truck. And, uh, and they should, they should know their uh, inertia movements of the car. I think they have most of the sensors there. And then there is here, there is the manual switch. What we installed there, what you only have to do there, here this is on that cubby board, what I have there installed. You press it down in order to operate it manually, right? And then on the other side here on the dashboard, very hidden, or almost hidden, but it's visible. Here is the little screen. It shows you when there's a trailer attached and it shows you how much... Uh, maybe, maybe better screen. So here's the screen. Can I get to that? Yes, there. And it's also really a one, really little piece of wire there. That's all what I need. So, and it shows there, both people can see it and shows how much brake is applied. Excellent. So now it puts the panel back on. So at first this panel here on the side, that was easy. Now this one has to be popped on. It is really a loud noise when you take it off. But two hands there, two hands there. And that brake controller becomes invisible. With the exception of the manual controller here and uh, all the way in the back there. Oh, there's a side panel there as well. But JJ installs the access to that where the, we put the wire through that side panel there. Is that correct? Uh -huh. Let me go. Here from that side. Here. That's the wire through that side panel. Yeah, we got it. So also here, wire, invisible, everything invisible. Only that little tiny thing needs to be visible because it needs to say something. Okay, now comes the big test. Because we need to hook it up to a trailer probably, to a cable at least, and to see if it's showing. And this is actually JJ's trailer. I cannot pull it, these are 8,000 pounds. But it's just to hook it up and to see if there is any sign coming up. Okay, so what was the reason here why that brake controller did not work is the Tesla is not according to the standards. So when you see that here is red goes to black, blue goes to blue, white goes to black, and white goes to red. So these are the <laughs> color standards from Tesla and, and uh, the brake controller had the standard colors. So we matched it up to the standard colors originally and that didn't work. So we looked in there and uh, in the manual again and I said, yeah, there are some companies who don't adhere to the standards and that's what we had to check out. And so now it's working. Okay, I'm gonna try it again. What happened if you press the manual slider then the numbers are coming up there on the display. I don't know if you could, can see that. It's very bright in here, but this is the brake application, so it's now working. Uh, we should be fine. Okay, good. Now, there are RV standards, and then there are car standards. And in a car, the power is red, usually, and the ground is black. And, and then there is a standard, and. Uh, and, and actually Tesla writes it on the wires as well uh, in a tiny print there or lasered on it or something. 
But in an RV, it is different, right? So, Jay, in an RV, the white wire is the ground, right? White wire is ground. And the black wire... Black wire is 12 volt positive. Is 12 volt positive, yep. right? So, and the uh, red wire in on an RV, what was that? What was that, the red wire in an RV there, uh, that one? Red wire is not usually used on an RV. Oh, okay, but... This the, is, on the trailer brake controller, this is the, the brake light. The brake uh, light. Yeah, brake switch. Yeah, the brake switch, brake, brake yeah. light. And the green was the green. Green with the green. Yeah, that did Because change. the green is trailer brakes. Trailer brakes, to yep. apply trailer brakes. Yep. So that's what we had to repair. Mm -hmm. And now we know, and now I you know. guys know as well. So uh, if that ever been... So basically, Tesla were going by car standards. And uh, the, this one is by RV trailer standards, right? Yep. So that's why you had to switch it all around. Uh -huh. Okay.